hello, 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 everyone. Everything old is new again, or whatever it is they say. I hope you enjoy me doing voiceovers instead of doing commentary via annotations. I've just finally gotten Thief Gold up and running on my new gaming rig. And I've decided, as my first project on this new beast of a computer, to play Thief Gold again with voiceovers in compliance with the actual ghosting rules according to the IDOS forum. So without further ado, we'll get started. Obviously, you have to play on expert mode, and we will do the training mission. Now, my videos aren't working, unfortunately. That's a pretty common problem playing Thief on new PCs, but I've separately uploaded the cinematics off the disc, so you should still be able to see them on YouTube. Anyway, for the training mission, all we have to do is follow the directions of our instructor. Of course, we're not going to be able to ghost this mission because it is impossible to get through it without dealing damage. I cite the training dummy as my example here. And in addition, when we get to our sparring partner, we will have to either receive a lot of damage or deal some damage to him. So at the outset, it's impossible to ghost the training mission. Although the ghost rules do allow exceptions when they are explicitly required by objectives, so long as the AI doesn't become aware of you in the process of completing those objectives. So, let's see what we can do. Welcome, young Garrett. In the nearby rooms I will instruct you in the various skills you will need to survive. Please stay in the entrance area to each room while I explain the room's purpose. When you are ready to begin your lessons, proceed down this hallway to the first room. Now, my issue here at the outset is that I don't know when these keepers might be alerted to my presence because they don't react to me. So I'm going to choose to believe that that guy You must learn how to move unseen. At all. Stay in the shadows. Avoid the light. The indicator on your screen will tell you how visible you are. Try to reach the top of the platform without being seen. I do have a tendency to get in a bit of a hurry. It's possible to hop that wall if you're playing for speed, but we're not playing for speed this time. I should really settle down. Well done. I did not see you approach. Open this door to continue. When the door is near the center of your screen, it will light up, indicating that it is selected. To manipulate selected doors and other objects, use them. Again, I'm going to choose to believe that that guy never actually saw me, even though he spoke to us when we got here. Good. Proceed down this corridor for your next test. I'm not going full Supreme Ghost, but when possible, I am going to go ahead and at least close doors behind me and do little things like that. We can check our map at any time. Let's go ahead and do that. I think you're probably just looking at a frozen original screen instead of seeing the map like I'm seeing, which is an unfortunate quirk of Fraps. One thing that doing voiceovers will allow me to do, however, is when I find a document on this playthrough, at the very least, I can read what it says. You can know what it says instead of having to pause and try and read it or just be unable to read it. Anyway, onward. Now you must learn to move quietly. Some surfaces are louder than others when walked upon and moving quickly makes more noise than moving slowly. Listen to your own footsteps to hear how much noise you are making. The instructor will have his back turned. You must get to the top of the platform without being heard. When you're playing this game, in general, there's almost never a reason not to be crouched. Now, you're supposed to follow the carpet all the way around, but you can jump to the carpeted <sighs> stairs here and it doesn't really make any difference. Very good. I did not hear you traverse the room. Beyond this door is a hallway that will lead you to your next task. And I like to come up that side, so he turns his back. Technically doesn't see us. We can run on the carpet, so I'll disregard my own advice and stand up. Ah, uh, yes. Now get your weapons. 
To pick up objects, select them by centering them on screen until they light up. Then use them. Choose your weapon now. Try readying your sword, and then your bow. You can always put them away again if you need your hands free. Now let's go out to the courtyard for some target practice. Now, here is what's going to be our main issue in avoiding an alert. Obviously, this guy never goes hostile, so I'm not all that worried about him, but I'd still like to do my best to technically avoid alerting him to my presence if I can. Ready your bow. Knock an arrow and draw back the string by holding down the attack button. Make sure you draw all the way back, or your shot will not have full power. Take aim, and when you are ready to shoot, release your attack. See if you can hit one of these targets. One of these targets? Bit Good worse. shot. Keep practicing if you wish. When you are ready to proceed, approach the training dummy and ready your sword. I do always like to retrieve arrows whenever possible. I did miss the bullseye. That sucks. Oh well. Now, here you see the training dummy. Swing at the target with the attack button. A quick tap will give you a slash. Move the tip of your sword to the left of the target for a left slash, and to the right of the target for a right slash. Hold the attack button down, then release for an overhead swing. Try both slashes and the overhead swing on the practice dummy. The training dummy is the one instance in the game where we are absolutely, unequivocally required to deal combat damage. We have to score those three hits on him. I've seen it deal 10 damage and I've seen it deal 20. I don't really know what causes that. I suspect it might be whether you hit him in the head or the shoulders, but I don't know for sure. As soon as we take our last swing, the overhead swing, that door's going to open and our sparring partner is going to show up. There are two ways to deal with the sparring partner. We can either hit him with the sword five times, or we can just stand in the ring and let him wail on us and take a ridiculous amount of damage. You have to do one of those two things in order to get the door open. I prefer, for this playthrough, to try my best to stay unseen, stay unheard, and get five hits on his back, so that is what we're going to do. Good job. You're ready for a live opponent. To practice against your partner, enter the cobbled sparring area. Keep sparring if you wish. When you are done, leave the sparring area. That's enough sparring for today. Please walk over to the table. Would you care for some refreshment before we move on, young Garrett? Please pick up all of the items on this table. Now you may be wondering what that was all about. In order to get the quote scroll, which, duh, we have to do, you always have to access secrets in these games. Come on, let's be real. You have to get through this gate before the guard gets, you know, completely clear of it, and you also have to have the key in order to open the door to the basketball court. Now you may be wondering what's going on here, exactly what I'm doing. I am, although he will never react to my presence, I am demonstrating a technique that we'll have to use quite a bit in actual ghosting, and that's the way that you can silently cross a tile floor. Now. You have to crouch, you have to hold down the shift key, at least with my bindings, in order to move slowly, and you can never take full steps. You have to move in little fractions of a step, like I'm doing right now. And although it's a little bit slow and a little bit painstaking, eventually you are able to get all the way down this fully tiled hallway without making any noise, which is what we're after. Now. He'll just obliviously stare into that corner forever, whatever we do. But even though he's not hostile and he will never be alerted and, you know, do anything that qualifies as busting us in a ghost sense by starting to search for us, it's good practice. And he's probably also capable of detecting us, even if he never reacts. So, <clears throat> we're going to sneak by him. 
the same way we would sneak by a real guard in a real mission after Keeper's training. I did get the key off the table. And I don't really know if I can qualify this as a success or not. Nobody ever acted alerted. He's the last AI we have to get past, by the way, in case you that in case that wasn't clear. So here is the door to the illustrious basketball court. We'll open that up. Once we get to the wood floor, we can speed up a little bit. Which is good. What a relief. Now, I don't know about you, but when I play the Looking Glass games, they always have their basketball court, and I always do like to try to make a basket. I find the best way to do it is to get, you can kind of see green lines on the floor here. If you stand on the fourth one back and try to bank the basketball in, that's usually the best way to go. Garrett's about as good at basketball as I am in real life. Need to aim a little higher, it seems. Close. If you're sticking with me and watching me try to sink this shot, I appreciate it. I realize it's somewhat ridiculous. There we go, two points. And now the big secret, as it were, is if you pick up this bedroll in the corner and then right click again, it turns out to be the quote scroll. I don't think you'll be able to see what it says on FRAP, so I will go ahead and take the time to read it to you. Quotes from the Dark Team during the development of Thief the Dark Project. Chris, I don't feel like a nut. Earlier I had no choice. Mock, I should do work. Someone bring me my computer. Tom, you know you're lucky I'm not wearing a G-string. Chris, yeah, well it's better to suck half as much, Greg, than never to have sucked at all. Mock, woohoo, woohoo, I'm the bug fairy. Tim, you're half right. Dorian to Mock, where you going with that pumpkin, son? Mock, yeah, I just saved cows. Doug, just think, around November 5th, it will be tragically funny and suicidally grim no matter what. Dorian, don't you be quoting me, you scurvy landlubber. Arg. Randy, uh, pirates don't say quote. Randy, it could use some paprika. Chris, paprika's the happy spice. Mock, I want to take damage and possibly even shout when I take damage. Dorian, that can be arranged. Dorian, you know I'm wearing tights right now. Tim, Mock, you were one queer-ass freak. Mock, you know, part of me wishes that that's the first time someone's told me that this week. Mock, I don't know which flow brushes to delete. I suggest you just blast them all and let God sort them out. Mock, why don't we all just Xerox our asses and ship that? Mock, so Laura says that my ranting is environmental sound and not speech. Tim, what's that buzzing noise? Dorian, it greatly affects one's workflow when one dies. Mock, guns don't kill people, slay events kill people. Tim, where does the player arm come from? Mock, well, there's a mommy player arm and a daddy player arm. Tim, and they both love each other very much, and the daddy player arm has a seed. Tim, it may be that he finds the sound of the arrow entering his body slightly suspicious. Mock, que se que se le frequency, Kenneth. Doug, is map.pcx you? Mock, uh, it's not identically me. Doug, well, I didn't mean it in the is map.pcx in his office sense. Mock and Doug, you're a Newtonian grinder. Chris, I'm a what? Mock, it's like an organ grinder, but without the monkey. Dorian, you should have five servings of fruit a day. Ken, endearingly. Dorian, you're my fruit of the day. Tim, we want the end game to be the climax of the mission, and you can't sustain a climax for 45 minutes. At least I can't. Doug, it may be stupid, but it's a well-oiled stupidity. Tim, it has a certain je ne sais quoi, but I don't know what that is. The management. The team bananas will be kept in my office until they ripen so that Mike doesn't eat them. Thank you. Nate. 
I had four of these, points to big cup full of coffee today, and actually saw and spoke to God, and he likes how the project's going. Laura, my arm won't come off. Tim, it all came down to sheep. Tim to Kate, I revoke your brain. Kate, your arm's only physical when you're thinking about it. Tim, there are no licking attacks in this game. Kate, it's an unnatural thing to get back up from the dead anyway. Mock, the physics system is a harsh mistress. Randy, Dorian is literal about everything. Dorian, no I'm not. Everything is too strong a word to use. Dorian, nobody uses the word ruly. Tim, I know, I'm just feeling gruntled. Dorian, next thing you know, you'll be plussed. Kate, it's his butt that has the velocity. Mock, yeah, I get killed all the time these days. Greg, hey, where'd the humans go? Tim, I'm very wary of the dangers of stacking objects myself. Guard, enough dancing. Dorian, more singing. Greg, there's a fine line between serenity and ennui. Mock, if you're talking about me, I didn't touch the brain. Tim, it's like fingernails on the chalkboard of your soul. Doug, in my level, I've been using a bush and a rolling pin as a lockpick. Mock, the quote list sure isn't going to help me convince my mom that I'm not gay. So there you go. Now we will drop the bedroll back in the corner where we found it. Similarly, we will drop the basketball in the center where we found it. Like I said, I'm not going to attempt full compliance with what's called the Supreme Ghost rules, but I'll do my best to put things back the way I found them, particularly when it's simple like this. Now we're back on the tile floor, so we have to sneak quietly again. And then, when we turn around, I'm going to lock the door behind us. Leave that the way we found it. And sneak past this guard again. I'm going to have a lot of time to converse with all of you while I'm crossing tile floors throughout the game. So let me tell you a little bit about myself, because I don't think I ever got to do that when I was using annotations. My name's Travis. I'm a second-year law student at Northwestern University School of Law, right in the heart of downtown Chicago, where it is currently, surprise, surprise, cold, wet, and really, really nasty out. And I just got distracted talking to you and screwed up and made a little noise on the tile. So I need to be more careful. I am married just over a year now to a wonderful woman named Tiffany who is fantastic about tolerating my gaming habit and I love games. I absolutely love them. I have been playing them since I was a little kid and I think that particularly the way they have evolved. They are a more complete form of entertainment than just about anything else you could occupy your time with. And among games, Thief the Dark Project is my absolute favorite of all time. I have never played a game as addictive as this. I have never replayed a game as many times as I've replayed this one. No other game, although <clears throat> some new ones are getting close, I have to admit, like, for example, Skyrim is very immersive except for its bugs, but even with the advent of modern gaming and the better graphics that it comes with, no game has ever quite convinced me that I actually was the person in the game the way Thief does. It's just so seamlessly immersive. I really liked Deus Ex 3. And for that reason, I have high hopes for Thief 4, and I'm really looking forward to it. But for now, Thief Gold remains my favorite. Most people like Thief 2 better, but I actually prefer the original just because, although Thief 2 perfected the stealth mechanics in ways that Thief Gold didn't pull off, I really enjoy the weirder missions. The sword is my personal favorite, and for me, Thief 2's level design aesthetic was just a little bit too straightforward. It didn't have any of the crazy or scary missions that this one does. Now then, <coughs> to the table. We have to pick up all of the objects, so we'll get the apple and the Cycle mushroom. through your inventory to see the objects you have in your pockets. Once an object is displayed, you may use it. Have something to eat if you wish. 
Then you may proceed. The next test is waiting on the other side of the metal door. Now... Supreme Ghost, right? Wherever possible we have to put stuff back, so... I put the... Apple and the potion back. I cannot, however, return my sword and bow. And... I have a choice to the make. The door is locked, but the key from the table will open it. To unlock the door, select the key in your inventory. Center the door on screen until it lights up. Then use the key on the door. Now as far as perfect supreme ghosting goes, we would have to both... Or supreme ghosting goes, we would have to both return the key to the table and lock the door behind us, which is obviously impossible. I'm going to choose... Good. To now head down this hallway to get to your next test. The instructor interrupted me. I'm going to choose to keep the key and lock the door behind me. Now, that guard was the last AI we'll run into in this mission, so we can make as much noise as we want. <clears throat> now you will learn new movement skills. First, climb the rope by jumping onto it. Move while looking up or down to climb up or down the rope. Turn to change your facing. If you jump again, you will release the rope. Now climb the rope to get to the top of the platform. Well done. Run and jump across the gap to the other side of the stream. Ah, uh, the simple joys of obstacle courses. Good jump. This obstacle is easy to climb, if you know how. First, move close to the wall. Next, jump to grab the edge of the wall and pull yourself up. Good job. I am most pleased with your progress. You have passed the last test for today. If you wish, you may stay to practice your climbing and jumping, or swimming, ducking, leaning, or crawling. When you are finished, you may return to your chambers by going through that red door. Farewell. There's one last uh, logistical mechanic to discuss, whether or not I'm going to Iron Man while playing the ghost style. The answer is no, I'm not. Reading the ghost rules, there is no Iron Man requirement. With that said, I will actually show my saves and loads, and to the extent it's possible, I will just show you a straight recording of from start to finish, including my failed attempts. So, hopefully there won't be too many of those. I have played this game at least 20 times, so there shouldn't be too many failures at this point in my Thief career. But where they do occur, you will see them. That way you'll understand which parts are really hard and which are pretty simple. Anyway, let's conclude the training mission. Don't miss the vase at the end. The keepers were training me to be one of them, but I found other uses for those skills. Other uses, indeed. See you next time. Well, I guess I won't end it quite yet. So, I do like to look at the statistics screen at the end, and I'll talk about it with you all. Of course, statistics can be misleading, and on this screen, all it shows us is our clear time. I don't know how many videos Fraps is going to divide this mission into, probably two, so I will see you all at the start of Lord Bafford's Manor. There we go make a save right here so I can reload and get straight to where I want to be and have a wonderful day. See you soon.